Hello and welcome to Walk the Line. I'm your host, Nasty Noop, and today I have Terra Dome with me. What's going on, Terra Dome? Nothing, man. Chilling, coming off another of exciting, man. Dynasty season, man. A lot of guys stepping up, a lot of guys fell off the mat, but man, it's not even keeping weak. Let's just get right into it. All right, man. Uh, we're going to go into our first segment, man, the season in review. Uh, our first topic up is surprise, surprise, surprise. What What is one of the surprises that you saw from uh, this 2022 season? One of the surprises, man, that I seen this season was KP and the Lions, man. What a lot of guys, you know, basically uh, probably don't remember is KP went on uh, auto. I mean, so that was uh, for like I think the first three weeks of the season. So that put him in a hole three games, man. Right now, this guy's sitting at nine and six. Pretty much, in my eyes, he got the fifth uh, playoff spot locked up in the NFC. But man, just seeing him fight back, man, after being in the hole three games, that's a big surprise to me, man. That's a big surprise. Yeah, that was on my list too, man, because I kind of had ridden him off uh, later on in the season, but uh, well, early on in the season, but uh, he turned it around once he got back, and now he's sitting pretty much locked up the the, the fifth slot in the playoffs, and uh, a lot of teams aren't going to want to see the Lions, man. He's the defending <laughs> champ, so uh, uh, it's, it's going to be very interesting to see how the playoffs play out. Uh, I know personally another surprise for me, man, I got a big surprise, man, uh, was the Eagles. Went into this season, made a trade with him uh, for his first and his second going into the 2023 draft. Figured, man, the way he was playing last season that he would finish uh, finish somewhere in the top 10 as far as picks. But this motherfucker decided that he wanted to win this year. So this pick is looking like it's going to be uh, a <laughs> mid to late first round pick, which kind of, you know, blew up my plans. But, hey, that's the risk we take when we do this type of stuff, man. Hey, you have any other surprises, man, that you want to talk about? It's just to speak on the Eagles uh, as far as winning. That was a big surprise to me too, man, because pretty much how he was playing last year was like, you know, coming into this season, I think that a lot of guys thought that that was a cakewalk when they seen him on, on their schedule. Like, oh, yeah, he was playing like shit. You know, send him a case of donuts uh, and some pizza, and he probably, you know, let us win anyway. But he came out, man, and that just show you the, the type of mentality that – Certain users have in a dynasty, man. You would, they can have a bad season, then the next season come out playing well, man. So shout out to him, man. But you know, but, uh, another surprise I got to speak on, man, is number one, number one, number one is the Chargers, man. Like, what the hell happened with him, Breezy? I don't know what was going on, man. But you just fell off the map. He said he was having issues with the PS4. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if there was a. Uh, I, I just don't know, man. I just can't speak on it, but it was a big surprise because it was like you was rolling the first season, then all of a sudden, I don't know if you looked at the scouting report, seen some players that you liked, and then the PS4 magically just broke, but I don't know, man. But hopefully you get that thing intact, man. But that was a big surprise to me, too. Yeah, man. It's like with anything else in life, man. Uh, you can fool people for so long, but at some point, you know, it'll come to light if he was faking this whole thing, and then I will step in and I will deal with it. But at this point, I'm going to take his word for it that he was having issues. And then uh, we'll just keep it moving on, man. He's going to, at this point, he's going to have a great draft, man. Having those two high picks uh, for his team, his pick, and then having the 49ers pick. So it was a good move by him. So I guess we'll go ahead and move on, man, to number two. And this, and, the, and we call this Terra Dome Thoughts, man. Just give it to him raw, baby. What, what are your thoughts? Ah, Terra Dome Thoughts. Okay, okay. I already know. Um... The number one thing I don't tolerate, I don't like, is dick riding, lawyering, whatever. You know I mean, and there's a lot of guys in the in the chat, man, that's misleading, giving props for dick riding. Now, this one particular user, Garza, I wasn't even worrying about you, man. I was like, I wasn't worrying about you. I'm just be honest. I wasn't worrying about you. I was talking about breezy, but you just kept at me in the chat, saying come direct, this and that. I'm like, okay, but since she want to be on the spotlight. Let's do some digging. One thing I can say about you, Garza, man, is you put yourself in a lot of position, a lot of situations that don't even retain you. You just put yourself there. For instance, Hot Tub. We all know Hot Tub is a good user. You don't gotta come to Hot Tub defense, man. Feel like you his lawyer. Every time someone mentions Hot Tub or adds Hot Tub in the chat, here you come being a lawyer. Let that man defend that man. You mentioned to me that you was grown in the chat, then. Let that man be a grown man and defend himself. And another thing, don't you ever, man, say, don't make that man mad. What kind of shit is that? <laughs> what kind of shit is that? Don't make that man mad. 
I'm just saying, I'm just calling how I'm seeing. This is just tear dome thoughts. Another thought is ah, another thought, another thought. I just can't get off the topic of the cars. That's just the <laughs> thoughts from my head. I just can't get off the topic. You mean you a good user? Like, I don't understand, man. Like, you should not have to come to this man defense. Like, I don't understand this. It's, the, the dick riding is just crazy, man. And I'm what like I said, I don't speak on a lot of things, but when I speak on certain things, man, it's just like, come on, man. Another terrorism thought. What happened, expert? Man, you just like what happened, baby? Like, uh uh understand, like, you know, some things wasn't going quite well as far as, you know, users not uh, you know, kneeling the ball down and, and, and just you know trying to run the score up. What happened, baby? Like my thing is this expert. You a good user, man. Keep yourself focused. Don't let that type of stuff, man, knock you off. We got users here, man, that just flat out don't show respect when it comes to playing the game, man. They could be up 30, 40, 50 and still come out and still trying to sling the rock. My thing on that, man, my thought on that is you got to keep yourself focused, man. Don't let the little things knock you off your square, man. But share them thoughts, man. I just gotta keep going back to Garza, man. But <laughs> those are my thoughts, man. That's, those are my thoughts, man. All right, man. You kept it raw and uncut, baby. That's all we can expect from Terradome Stops, man. So I guess we'll move on to the third topic. The saga continues, man. We're heading into the 2020, uh, 20, 23rd season, so it should be very interesting, especially since we're getting closer to the high stakes season. Uh, the knives are about to come out. People are starting to. St- uh, stab other users in the back, man, for players and 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 for other in other situations, man. So it, it should be uh, very interesting. What are your thoughts? My thoughts on the soccer teams. Listen, guys, it's it's getting close to that high stakes season. This season is going to. I'm telling you, man. I experienced one of them. It's going to be crazy. You're going to have users. A, a lot of users going. A lot of stuff that users let slide, man. As far as motion and players, this and that. A lot of guys going to be, you know, DMing. All the commissions letting them know this, letting them know that. There's going to be a lot of user watching as far as guys watching your game, ratting you out. There's going to be a lot of people out there that's going to be, you know, as far as just just on your, on your ass. Like, everybody's watching, the feds watching everything, man. And a number, th- a number one thing is, guys, is no more time for mistakes. Giving up this amount of first-round picks for a player that you know that's not going to fit your scheme, that is time is officially over man it's time to lock in it's time to get yourself in that right flow that right rhythm man i'm telling you right now man that 2024 season is gonna be crazy man it's gonna be crazy a lot of guys that's you know that's out there like on the outskirts man it's gonna be stepping up and you're gonna be seeing a lot of surprises man a lot of surprises so man the soccer gonna continue and it's gonna be an epic man i'm telling you yeah man i want to piggyback on, on the rules violation situation uh, just want everybody to know, man, if you violate a rule in season 2024, it will be enforced because you can have your starting QB uh, set down. You can have your starting halfback set down or you can have your starting uh, wide receiver set down if you break a rule. It's just that simple. And then once once that rule violation or penalty is enforced on you, I want you to get up, go to YouTube, type in Silk the Shocker. And type in it ain't my fault and i want you to listen to that song because when i put the penalty on you i want you to push play it ain't my fault you broke the rule because you did not know the rules so you have nobody to blame but yourself so don't come hit me in the dm begging because your players are sitting and it's messing up your draft position because at this point the rules are on the website you can review them save save the link to your phone so it makes it easy for you to go get the go pull up the rules at any time during the game. So that's what it is, man. And we will keep the soccer uh, the soccer continues, baby. Because I want to say this, man. As we move into uh, June, I'm excited to be going to California, man, to represent the league. To to report Shout back out. to you guys, man, on how the game played, how it looks, are, are any of the features that we requested as a uh, CFM community in the game. Uh, I, I, I'm kind of doubtful that they will show us or they'll allow us to play um, any uh, parts of the CFM. I'm hoping, but from what I've been reading on, on Twitter and a couple other places, the development developers will be uh, accessible, so you're able to ask them any questions at that point. Any questions, so I'm going to be hell-bent on asking questions on the CFM mode so that I can report back to you guys exactly what we can expect going into Madden 
18. I'm excited. I love the new target, uh, passing target uh, feature that they put out. And also be looking out tonight for the grind. We're going to review some of the features that are on the back of the box. There's a couple things, man, you guys probably have missed. So we're going we're gonna to dig into that tonight on, on the other show. So uh, you have anything else, Chris, for the saga continues before we move on? Man, I'm telling y'all, man, bring that shit. That's it. Bring it. All let's right. keep moving on the right. Let's keep moving on the right path. Let's moving on. Let's. That's, that's just that keeps the saga going, man. Let's just keep moving forward and let's just keep this shit rolling. True, true, true. So as we move on, man, let's move on to the to the next segment. It's the player spotlight. First up, we have the halfback from the Carolina Panthers, Adrian Keys. There was a lot of controversy around this player, man, as far as. Uh, where he was drafted in in the 2022 draft uh me being one of the people that analyzed all the teams prior to the draft i still think this guy was a reach even though he came into the season and produced for me he's still a reach because i played his team twice a season and i know where his deficiencies are uh i'm not gonna say i'm on the show because that's for him to figure out but he did not need a half pack I don't care if this guy ends up winning rookie of the year and MVP of the dynasty this season. I still think he was a reach, but he, he had a great season. So what, what are your thoughts on the player? Man, listen, this guy flat out from just looking at his stats, man, I, I ain't played the Panthers this year, but just looking at his stats, man, number one that stand out is average per carry, 6.7 yards. Like, six yards, that's damn near seven yards per carry. You know what I'm saying? So my whole thing is that takes a lot of pressure off of a quarterback that makes a defense has to be honest, man. It's just like you can't come out against this guy, at least what I'm looking at, you know, on paper. You cannot come out and just decide to play this offense just passing or rushing. You have to be honest. Man, the guy looked like he produced, but uh Yeah, man, like a look like a stud. In my eyes, man, averaging uh one one thirteen uh yards per game, eighteen broken tackles. Uh, you know, yards after contact, 424. The guy like a flat-out monster in my eyes, but, yeah, he definitely deserved a spotlight, man. He definitely deserved a spotlight. Yeah, he deserved a spotlight, man. He had a good a good season rushing against uh, pretty much all the teams in the dynasty except for the Falcons because we don't play that shit in Atlanta. But, <laughs> <laughs> but let's move on to the to the, uh, the next spotlighted player for the 2022 season. And we have uh, Bondre Battles, man, coming out of Jacksonville, man. This player came in uh, as an undrafted free agent. Uh, I read I read the article that was posted to the websites uh, by Andy, and uh, this player came out of nowhere, man. This dude is balling, man. <laughs> so I, I would love to have him in Atlanta on that defensive line. So uh, what are your thoughts? I love defensive players. And uh, number one thing is to come in undrafted and produce like this? Send him over to Oakland. You gonna hit the DMs. I'm gonna make a negotiation. He got to be in Oakland. But just a flat out beast, man. 22 sacks. 22. Flat out monster. Ripping through them linemen. Just demolishing them and demolishing the quarterback, man. That's just flat out show you, man, that talent can be found anywhere, man. He was undrafted. Undrafted, man. And that just shows you. Number one, GM skills, man. But for him just to come off a season like this, man, I'm excited to see what he's going to do in the playoffs. Because we had we had them slumpage where players rise through the whole regular season. Then once the playoffs get here, man, they start choking and start, you know, reproducing. So I'm, I just want to see the guy, you know, continue to do continue to do what he do, man. And that's it. That's it. I just wanna, that's all I want to see, man. I just want to see him do what he do. Yeah, I have to agree, man. He's going to need that, especially if he goes up against the uh, Broncos in the playoffs. Uh, currently, I, I believe he's, he's seated number two, so he'll get this first round uh, wild card bye. So uh, at some point, if he wins out, he's going to have to face those Broncos, and he's going to have to put pressure on uh, on that quarterback out there to uh, slow down that uh, heavy uh, passing offensive team. But let's go ahead and move on, man, to one of the most uh, controversial segments in, in on the DML network. We have the what the fuck news segment. Uh, so, hey man, what's number one this uh, this season on the what the fuck news? <laughs> number one, man. <laughs> number one, gotta go, man. To hot tub, man. Ah, the biggest meltdown in dynasty history, man. 
this guy man just flat out melted down man it, it, like it's, it's, it's this had to be number one it had to i mean he was up by multiple touchdowns multiple i mean but it, it's just crazy man it's just crazy he was about multiple touchdowns sj was just sj just dialed in man and, and came back and won the fucking game how did you lose a multiple touchdown lead in under two minutes how is that even possible you, you know what that's a good question man so instead of us telling the story how about we pull up the footage and, and let the guy see what what happened Man, you see right there, man, just doing dumb shit like that, man, when you're up instead of just, you know, either running the ball or kneeling the ball can cost you a game, man. So always remember, man, in the dynasty, a game is never over until the clock hits zero. So if you choose to keep passing the ball, you have an opportunity and a chance to become known as the greatest implosion in the dynasty Madden League history. And that goes to Hot Tub at this point. So what? So, Chris, it's on you at this point. Man, at this point, Hot Tub, man, you usually be on the show for good things, but this time, you want to what the fuck news. Dion, give him the button. What the fuck? All right, man. So, let's go ahead and move on to the, the second what the fuck news moment of the 2022 season. What do you have here? Tone and the Seattle Seahawks, man. This actually was a game featuring myself and my Oakland Raiders. Tone driving down. I mean... It's the, about to hit halftime. I think it was a, under a minute, some change. He gets down to the two yard line, runs the ball. We stop him for negative yardage. He hurry up offenses and decides to run the ball again, but dives. I repeat, dives a diving attempt from the third yard line to the end zone, and his running back got flipped the fuck over and fumbled the ball. What the fuck is going on? Tone you, my. Man, shout out to you and them Seattle Seahawks, but I just was watching the game and just cracking up. Before y'all didn't see it, go ahead, Deion, let them see it. Wow. <laughs> I bet Tone won't do that again. And I just was wondering what was Tone thinking. I was just like in my head, like, all right, he about to hurry up offense. Is he going to... Is he going to pass it? Is he going to run it? When he hiked the ball and I seen him die from the three-yard line, I was like, what the fuck? I just had to laugh it off, but man, it was a good game. But at the end of the day, Tone, you got to get the button, so Deion, give it to him. What the fuck? All right, moving on to the number three what the fuck moment of the 2022 season. What do you have here, Chris? We have a lot of teams this year, man, was getting blown off the map. But it was three particular games that stood out to me, man. And in these three games, <laughs> it featured the same user twice. My first game got to be the Broncos. No, I'm sorry, excuse me. It got to be Miami versus the New York Jets. I mean, 51-7 was the score. Jets 51, Dolphins 7. Let me repeat that. Jets 51, Dolphins 7. What stood out in this game, man, was turnovers. Miami could not control the turnover ratio. Eight turnovers in this game. We all know in the dynasty, if you turn the ball over, that's going to come back to bite you in your ass. And in this game, it did. Another game that stood out to me was the Chargers versus the 49ers. Once again, the Chargers versus the 49ers. This score was, I believe, hold on, let me look into my notes real fast. All right, another game that stood out to me was the Chargers versus the 49ers. Let me repeat that. The Chargers versus the 49ers. And in this game, the score was Chargers 73, 49ers 7. 73 to 7. One thing that stood out in this game also, turnovers. The 49ers gave up nine turnovers. Nine, nine turnovers. They let the Chargers run all over them for 128 yards, 464 yards passing. This guy couldn't flat out stop anything. I don't know what's going on over there in San Fran, but you got to tighten up because you let the Broncos put up 
63 points on you, and you scored seven points again. I don't know if seven a favorite number out there in San Fran, <laughs> but y'all guys need to get it together. And on that note, San Fran and the goddamn Miami Dolphins and all y'all guys is out there that's getting blown out. This button right here is for all y'all. Tighten up, but Dion, give him the button also. What the fuck? All right, that ends the the what the fuck news segment for the 2022 season man as we move on to our final segment of the show it's the dynasty playoff picture this is what we all play for man every season is to get to the playoffs only the select few have have a shot at this point to make it to the playoffs and uh you know represent their team in the playoffs man to start off we're gonna start off with the nfc and here's a picture uh, through week 16, man. What are your thoughts and who do you think is going to come out of the NFC to represent in the Super Bowl this year? Ah, uh, the NFC, first of all, get something straight. It's a lot of good teams that's in the hunt. A lot of good teams, man, that's in the hunt. But I got to, for coming out of the NFC, I got to stick with, ah, I got to go with KP, man. Because just that run that he, how can you start in a hole down Two to three games. You starting off with three losses. Two to three losses. I mean, I don't know what the number is, but it was two to three losses. And just for you to merge back and even be in a wild card round, some guys counted you out. But, man, he's. I got to go with the Lions, man. I got to go with the Lions. And the reason why I have to go with the Lions is because of the simple fact that, okay, uh, Garza, three, you got Garza sitting at 13-2. You got SGA eight and four. You got the Bears eight and four, and the Cowboys expert in them at ten and six. The reason why I gotta go with them because Garza just will he choke? Or will he sit there and overcome it? Because for the past couple years, man, it's been chokage out there in Tampa. But I gotta go with KP in the Lions. Yeah, man, I'm gonna have to agree with you here, man. KP is a defending champ, man. He never go against the champion, man. So, uh, the heart of a champion, man, as Rudy Chomjanovich said uh, uh, a couple decades ago, man. Never never root against the heart of a champion. So, uh, I think he's dangerous, man. He's probably the most dangerous team going into the playoffs, man. He, he's playing pretty good right now. Uh, I'm looking at the game right now. He, I'm going up against the Dolphins, and he's putting in work to lock in that, that number five position. Uh, to start the uh, wild card round off, so should be interesting, man. So our both predictions for the NFC, who will represent the NFC in the playoffs, has to go to the uh, the Detroit Lions at this point, man. So let's go ahead and, and look at the uh, the AFC picture. So who do you think is going to represent again this year for the AFC? All right, the AFC. All right, now listen here, man. The AFC. <sighs> A lot of people want to lean towards Hot Tub. I like to think outside the box here, man. Shout out to Hot Tub. He's a good user. We all know that. But one thing I can say is, man, I want to I want to highlight two users in this in the AFC. The Jaguars and the Titans. Both of these users, man, had Hot Tub against the ropes. And I don't know what happened as far as them getting away from their game plan, but I watched both of these games, I watch the Jaguars play them, and I watch the Titans play them. To me, these two users, in my eyes, can beat Hot Tub, but they have to stick to the game plan. I don't know if they get excited once they go up, or they just fall off. Stick to the game plan, man, but in the Dynasty, man, coming close, it does, that, does just not cut it, so I'm going to have to go with the Broncos, man coming out of the NFC. I'm hoping that these two guys, though, that I mentioned, man, can step up and and prove me wrong. But I got to go with, man, the Broncos and Hot Tub coming out of AFC. Yeah, the Titans are still in the hunt, uh, but he's going to need a lot of help. He's going to need the Bengals to fall tonight in their game against the Patriots, which is possible. But if he wins tonight, uh, the Bengals will uh, lock up that, that sixth uh, spot in the, uh, the playoffs this season. And the Titans can start planning his offseason uh, schedule at that point. Um, I have to agree with you. I, I'm predicting that uh, the most dominant player in the AFC, this Madden go around, will represent the AFC again. Uh, 
So it'll be another hot tub, maybe uh, it'll be another hot tub versus KP Super Bowl in the dynasty this season, unless uh, we get another uh, Muhammad Ali moment and somebody shocks the world. But outside of that, <laughs> man, <laughs> see see those two guys in the playoffs again. See, the, the, and, the, and the thing I want to mention is just because you're in the playoffs and, and your team hasn't been mentioned as far as even making it to the Super Bowl or wherever, prove us wrong, man. Like, I mean, I, I just go off for the facts. The guys, them two teams that I mentioned that I'm predicting to get there is, you know, they're dominating all season. But my whole thing is this, man. In the dynasty, any given game, any given day, anybody can win. So, I want y'all to prove me wrong. You mean? Prove me wrong. Exactly, man. I, I think a lot of users in the league, man, they have one set game plan that no matter what, they're going to stick to that game plan and not switch it up. If this guy has beat you 50 times before doing using your game plan, how about you change it up and try something different? Because at this point, you have nothing to lose. This dude has already been dominating you for pretty much the entire Madden uh, 17 season. So switch it up. Do something different. What you what you're doing does not work against this user. So change it up. You know, I had to come to that mind frame myself. What I was doing was not working against this particular user, so I switched it up. When my big boys come back next season, you're gonna get a good dose of what's coming for you. Trust me and believe that it's coming for you. So if you think I'm talking to you, then I'm talking to you. I'm not gonna say no names on this show, <laughs> but know that I'm coming for you. Know that I'm coming for you. Because playtime is over, baby. Playtime is over for me. I'm focused. I've had a lot going on in this Madden version as far as getting the league established and doing a lot of things. But when it comes to me staying in Atlanta for Madden 18, I'm willing to cut somebody's throat at this point to stay in Atlanta. So playtime for me is over. Games are over. So when the big boys come back next season, you're going to get a heavy dose of the new revamped Atlanta Falcons offense. We got the number one defense. Now we just need to work on this offense and get this offense rolling. Once we get in that top ten, it's, it's, it's game time over, baby. Game time, man. It's game time. Exactly. So, uh, in closing, hey, what, what do you have in closing? In closing, y'all. In closing, you already know my my number one closing statement is, man. Bring it. Come out and compete. All that extra stuff. All that extra stuff. As far as you know. Going, worrying about, worrying about this user, that user. Focus on your game. Repeat. Focus in on your game and bring it. Don't worry about what's going on with any other user. Focus on your game. Focus, man. Let's keep this shit rolling in the direction that it's going. Exactly, man. So, there you have it, folks. That's another episode of Walk the Line. We'll see you guys at the end of the 2023 season, heading into that 2024 season, and we're out. Peace.